ever since we moved into this apartment, my boyfriend, he was supposed to be working from home and instead they haven't figured out his, his situation yet. So he has not been working. I work from home. The cast have had us all to themselves and today is the first day my boyfriend is not home all day long and they have just been harassing me. I just want to film. It's not even close to your dinner time and he will not leave me alone. So this should be a fun video to film. Anyways, hi, hello. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be recreating a popular look that I got a lot of requests to do. I did this look a couple of times for a couple of TikToks. I did it for Instagram pictures. It's like one of my favorite looks that I think I've like ever done and it's like kind of spooky. I'll show you guys what the look looks like without the contacts. You can see what it looks like in the thumbnail. So you already know I'm wearing contacts and everything outfit wise will be linked in the description and then I'll tell you like what I'm using. Um, but before we begin with that, I do have to tell you about today's sponsor. So today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. If you watched my boyfriend does my makeup video, you will remember that Skillshare is an online learning community that I was actually a part of. I was using this service before they even reached out to me. So when I saw the collab email, I was super, super excited. This fall, it'll actually be a year since I started using Skillshare. You can take all sorts of classes ranging from anything from photography, graphic design, illustration, web development, even social media. I have been primarily using it for drawing. I'm currently taking classes hosted by Brent Eviston. I think I said his name wrong last time, but he's amazing. I have found them so helpful and I'm somebody who really struggles with online learning. That's one of the things I love about it is that there are thousands of classes taught by a variety of people. So no matter what your learning style is, there is a space within this community for you to explore your creativity. If you would like to try out Skillshare, head to the link in my description where the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click that link can get a free one month trial of Skillshare. Now onto the makeup. So I feel like the contacts and the wig and the outfit and everything really make the look. If you want to know where I got all of this, I will link it in the description, but I'm going to get started. So the first thing that I'm going to do is my complexion. It's the same that I've done in like every other video, except I'm going to use my new favorite concealer. And if you watched my last video, you will know that, that is the Anastasia. Magic Touch Concealer. This shit is so good. Do you guys like my nails? I got them like really, really sharp this time. Super spooky. So I'm using my Fenty Soft Matte Primer. Are you guys excited for a spooky season? It's almost here. I am going to be using my Marc Jacobs Extra Shot foundation today just because the Anastasia foundation is so dewy and combined with the concealer, it's actually a little too dewy for me. I've started setting my foundation with powder, you guys. Ever since I moved here, well, some foundation, I'm not gonna set this one, but I've started to set like the ColourPop Pretty Fresh and the Anastasia one because ever since I've moved here, my skin has just been so freaking oily. That's also why I'm breaking out so bad. My skin's just adjusting. But this one tends to not transfer as easily. It tends to dry down a little bit more matte. Last time I did my makeup, I combined the foundation and the concealer together and they work really well together despite having different feels and different finishes. This one's a lot thinner of a consistency. This one's a lot thicker. This definitely has more of like a pale, almost like olive green undertone, but it blends out. Moving on to brows, would you guys be interested if I did a dedicated video for each facial feature? Because when I edit these full face looks, I tend to speed the individual parts up a bit. That way the video is not super duper long. But if you want me to do like a feature focus video for brows, for like basics on eyeshadow, for lips, for like cheeks and contour and you know, complexion, everything, I could totally do that and I wouldn't have to speed it up as much. So if that's something you're interested in, let me know. I know brows in particular were really, really hard for me. So seeing how people did it really helped. I know people have been saying that they do like it when I do my whole face in the video, not just eyeshadow shadow or whatever so I'm still trying to do everything for you but I tend to have to cut parts out just to like keep the video from being like an hour long. So this is the dip brow pomade. I always use this stuff.
So with my brows, I do my outline. You guys have seen this. And then I fill them in. And then when you get up to the inner part of your brow, if you're doing it this method, you just want to make sure you're not like picking up any more product because you want this part to be lighter than everything else. I really don't like how the end turned out though. So I'm going to go through with my concealer and fix it. I am going to use my e.l.f. 16 hour camo concealer to kind of fix up my eyebrows. I tried to use this concealer to replace the Tarte Shape Tape concealer and it's just not quite as good at creating a cut crease as that one. So I did have to go rebuy that one because I ran out of it. But this one is still really good. So I'm trying to use it up. I'm gonna use my Anastasia eye primer, like always. Trying to stab myself in the eyeball today. Okay, let's get into the actual look. I'm so excited, I love this look. So as far as like my looks go, this one was actually really easy to do. It was pretty simple. I'm gonna be using the Sugar Pill Single Shadow in shade Valuria. There's another similar one in this Anastasia palette. I think this is actually the one that I used for the look, but I want it to be more purple. So I'm gonna use this one instead today. So taking my fluffy brush, we are going to kind of create a halo eye. We're gonna be putting this in the inner and outer corners of our eye. So that's what that looks like. Now I'm gonna use Sugar Pill Ice Angel. I've said this before on this channel, but this shadow was discontinued. So if you don't have this one, you can just use a white shadow and put some like, maybe like a reflective like glitter over it. Or another similar one would be Fenty Chills, this little highlighter. There's a lot of these like reflective white shadows with blue shifts. So I can't really name all of them, but that's kind of what you want. Or you could just use a white one. It really doesn't matter. And I'm gonna go in with just my ring ting ring tinger my ring finger the tip of my ring finger take a little bit of that and put that right in the center of my eyelid the reason i like to use my fingertip is because for shimmer especially i feel like it just transfers much more of the pigment than a brush would so since i have smaller eyes i always bring mine up into my crease that way it gives like the illusion of a bigger eyelid but if you don't have my eye shape and you have like bigger eyes or more pronounced eyelids you would want to stick with just your eyelids i always get a lot of questions about how to do makeup for hooded eyes and it's it's just really difficult to like explain that as somebody who doesn't have that eye shape. My eye shape is definitely more deep set. I have smaller eyes. They're almond shaped. I do have a lot of lid space as well. So my looks would not be very suitable for someone who doesn't have very much like space here. So always keep that in mind when you're like looking for tutorials to follow or people to learn from. You definitely want to find somebody who has like your eye shape for eye makeup. I'm gonna clean this brush off and just make this purple a little bit more pronounced. So this brush is a little bit more tapered, so I'm able to kind of deposit more pigment in one place, making it brighter and darker. And I'm just gonna carefully blend over the edges of this white shadow that we have. Okay, I am gonna actually use a shade out of this Anastasia palette. So this is volume five of the Norvina collection. I use these all the time. And when I originally did this look, I actually used this color right here. So if you have this palette, you could totally use that. I'm gonna use this glitter color. It's just like a white glitter. And I'm gonna put that right on top of my other white glitter just to like make it pop a little bit more. And that is it for our top shadow, you guys. I feel like I spend so much time on my eyeshadow. So when I can like pull a look off like this that looks really good, it's like pretty fast relatively, it makes me very happy. 
For my eyeliner today, I'm gonna to be using the Essence Super Precise Liquid Eyeliner. I'm also gonna be using the Wet n Wild Mega Liner since I'm running out of this one, but I've started to use this one for my eyeliner and then this one for my inner corner liner. Actually, I'm gonna do my under eye shadow and then we'll do liner. For my lower shadow, I'm basically gonna do the same thing. So taking this purple color, we're gonna connect the top here and then we're gonna do the inner corner as well, leaving just a little bit of space to put some white glitter. Okay, so my house right now dead ass smells like cat food and not in a good way. It kind of smells like cat food that's been like thrown up and I cannot find a source for why it would smell like that. And as far as I know, nobody has thrown up. Just this past week, we were thinking we were going crazy because we were smelling pee in our bedroom and we couldn't figure out where it was coming from. And we finally figured out that one of the cats had peed on the bed. We got a new bed, by the way. It's fucking enormous. I've never Never owned a king bed in my life we got a purple mattress from the brand called purple like why could i not shop for a brand called purple it was expensive and it was another purchase that i put on my credit card that i will never be checking because fuck that i just don't want to know totally worth it though it's so fucking nice like i ah, it's so good but it is really big so we didn't notice that somebody had peed on it because like we can't even reach the end of it i don't know how we didn't know but we didn't and we finally found it i'm like currently in the process of cleaning like all of my blankets i swear to god like my closet in here smells like pee and i've like smelled everything can't find it and then this room smells like cat puke and I can't find it. And I'm so paranoid because we thought we were paranoid before. We thought we were crazy and it, we weren't. So I'm like, I'm just waiting to find the disaster. Okay, now we're gonna do eyeliner. So I'm taking my Essence liner. So with this eyeliner, it's great, but it just transfers like really, really easily. So you just have to be careful let it dry before you do anything crazy, like blinking or breathing. So as you can see, I started in the middle of my eye to draw up my liner. I took this up like really high today. I'm feeling dramatic, I guess. But like you see the little dot? That's because it wasn't completely dry and I blinked, so don't do that. So for my bottom liner, I'm actually gonna do it a little differently than I did in the picture because when I did my eyeliner last time, I didn't make it quite so vertical. It was more out to the side. So it's gonna look a little weird if I do it exactly the same way. If you wanted to do it the way that it was done originally, all you would do is take a line underneath your eye. I kind of like use this little crease under here as a reference for myself. So I usually start like right here and then just draw a line up. But since my eyeliner is like so vertical today, I'm actually gonna do something a little different. And the reason that I like to do things underneath my eyes, I feel like it just kind of makes my eyes look bigger. You don't have to if you don't want to, but I just like how it looks. I'm also going to do my waterline real quick. Speaking of making my eyes look bigger. Ugh. Shit takes forever to dry. For underneath my eyes, I'm gonna be using the Wet n Wild liner just because it's a little easier to draw like little triangular shapes with it. Maybe I will do a little line actually now that I'm looking at it. So I'm gonna do just like a little line like that. really struggled with that triangle. But yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. And then I'm gonna do my inner corner liner. I think little extra things like this are cute. You totally don't have to do them if you don't want to. I'm gonna put on my lashes now. These are Miss Fury from Rouge and Rogue. And I'm using black duo glue. I forgot to do my waterline on the other side. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Another reason that I like to do eyeliner underneath my eyes is because it kind of adds some definition and contrast to my eye so that I don't have to put mascara down here because like pretty much all mascaras transfer on me. Even using like the clear brow gel trick, the one that I bought, the Kosas one, isn't working very well right now. So I've been doing eyeliner like this a lot because I like the way it makes my eyes look. It kind of gives me the same effect that putting mascara on my lower lashes would give me, but I don't have to deal with all the black smudging all day long. While I am letting my lash is completely dry, the glue completely dry before I actually put mascara on, I'm gonna do my blush. And I'm gonna be using the Fenty Drama Class. I use this blush all the time on this channel and I have a brush specifically for it because I use it so often. So I don't know where I got this. 
I take my blush up very high, almost like connecting it to my eyeshadow. I think that that look is just really pretty and it kind of lifts your face. It's It kind of acts like a contour as well. You don't really like have to contour your face. At least I don't with my face shape. You still can if you want to. The thing I love about using a cream blush over a powder is that if I feel like my blush is taken a little too far down, like I feel like this side's lower than this side, one thing you can do is take your beauty blender and go over the top of the bottom of it and it will kind of lift it up because it's blending out the bottom like liquid and cream blend a lot better than a powder in a liquid would it just tends to not work as well with powdered products can't forget the nose my favorite part and the only thing really loves to do is lipstick and then mascara and put in my contacts i can't really tell you where i got the septum ring i don't remember but I'm pretty sure I just searched on Amazon for fake septum rings and found one that way. If you don't want to shop on Amazon, there are a lot of people selling them on Etsy, which I'm pretty sure Etsy's owned by Amazon. Get a real piercing, unless you had a nose job like me and can't have one. Anyways, KVD Black Witches Lipstick, that's what we're doing. And then I'm gonna do my uh, mascara at the end. For my mascara, I'm gonna use this Lancome one. Is it Lancome or Lancome? I've heard it two different ways. But I got this in gratis at Sephora. It's not cruelty free, but it's really fucking good. And I'm using it up because like I, I got it for free. I totally forgot about highlight. For my highlight, I'm gonna be using the Revolution Beauty Highlighter Reloaded. I've been using this as a replacement for my Fenty Diamond Balm it broke. Eventually I will purchase another one, but I'm gonna use this one up first because it's like pretty much exactly the same thing. Okay, now contacts. Actually, I thought I would show you guys how I put my contacts in and take them out with my nails because so many people ask me. So this is my natural eye color. My eyes are hazel. So what I do, I've already taken one out, but how I take them out is I take two of my fingers and you're just gonna wanna use the pads of your fingers. Don't stick your nails in your eyeballs. And I place them right on top of the contact. And this kind of takes a couple of tries sometimes, but you kind of want to pinch it. Oh my God, no, I can't do it because I'm trying to do it on camera. Yeah, you want to pinch it with your two fingers and pull it out. So that's how I get my contacts out. And then these contacts are linked down in my description if you want to get them. These are my spooky ones. So how I put them in is I like to use my ring finger. I will balance it right on top of my ring finger like that. I kind of use this hand to pull my eye down. And then once it's in there, I will start to move my eye back and forth to get it to stick to my eye. This took me so long to learn how to do, by the way. Contacts were really, really hard for me to put in. So it is just muscle memory. You'll just have to practice a lot. But at this point, I'm really good at it. But like when I say it took like hours to even just get one contact in my eye, I'm serious. Ta-da! Now they're in. A lot of people ask me if I can see with these in. It's really blurry, but I can still see. Technically, they are prescription somehow. So like, they're supposed to make it so I can see at a prescription level. And like, yeah, I mean, I just held this up from across the room. This was a lot blurrier without my contacts than it is now. So they, do, they are prescription, but it just kind of feels like you're looking through like a sheet of white. Okay, you guys, this is the full look. I'm gonna take my bobby pins out. And like I said, all of like my outfit, the wig, the accessories will be linked in the description. So definitely check that out. And then that Skillshare link is there as well. So you can try Skillshare out. Okay, bye.